Welcome to my new video series, Your Home Yeast Lab Made Easy. One of the complaints I get in a lot of my videos is I do all my work, uh, all my yeast culturing at work where I have access to a full scientific lab. And a lot of those things that I do, you just can't do at home. So my goal in this video series is to give a series of very short videos that will show you how to actually do a lot of the stuff that I can do in my scientific lab at home using the sorts of materials and supplies that you can easily get your hands on. So I hope you'll enjoy these videos. Uh, over the next few months, there should be six or seven of them coming out, and I hope they help you get your home lab up and running. So the most important part of having a home yeast lab is actually having a clean place to work. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to culture yeast, or if you're just making starters, you need a clean place to work. So this is a good example of what you don't want. It's cluttered, it's dusty, it's dirty. What I mean by dust-free is simply if you clean it, after 24 hours there is invisible dust again. It should be in a draft-free area, so if there's any windows nearby, you might want to close those. If it's near a vent for your, your air system, you may also want to close that as well. Uh, as you would not want it to be uh, very cluttered, you need some space to work. But it doesn't need to be very big. You only need a few square feet uh, in order to be able to run your home yeast lab. So this is much better. Uh, the surface has been decluttered. It's been dusted. The one thing I didn't mention uh, previously was it's also a non-absorbent surface. You don't want a porous surface because stuff could potentially soak into there and grow and then you have a, a contaminated surface. So the next step is to clean uh, the surface to minimize the number of bacteria present. So the first thing you want to do is just with soap and water, and you don't even need antibacterial soap for this, you just want to wipe down the surface. Get off any dirt or grime that might be present. And before you go on to the next step, you want to make sure that this is completely dry. Um, because you don't want to be diluting out your sanitizing agent when we then sanitize this surface. So for a sanitizing agent, all you really need would be something like star sand in a spray bottle. And you just wet the surface with this. And you want to give that a good 30-40 seconds uh, to sanitize uh, before beginning your work. So the work surface we've prepared here, uh, sorry, the workspace we've prepared here is actually good enough for pretty much most of these culturing that most brewers would do all the time. So what I mean by that is preparing starters, growing up yeast from you know a tube of white labs yeast or, or a, a Y yeast smack pack. But if you really want to get into yeast culturing, if you want to be doing frozen cultures, um, growing yeast on plates, those sorts of things, you do need one additional thing and that is either a Bunsen burner or an alcohol lamp and what these do and how they work uh, including how to make your own alcohol lamp will be covered in my next video. So that's the sort of first real video in my how to make a yeast lab video series, simply showing you how to set up a proper work area for doing any kind of yeast work. Uh, over the next few videos, I am going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, some more advanced methods, um, such as making a streak plate, but eventually I will come back to actually just doing basic starters. Until next time.